Hello, everyone. I'm Karen. And I'm Ryan. And, and together, together we, are we are Karayan. Karen. And we are here <laughs> today to tell you our story. Our story. Yep. So let me begin by introducing myself. I live in Melbourne um, on and off now for, if I add about the years, say 13, 14 years. But I've been moving in and out a few times uh, because of the husband, you know. So we moved back to Singapore three times and then we moved back here. So I'm a veteran at moving in and out. Um, and I'm here with my two boys in Melbourne. Over to you, Ryan. All right. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, uh, a little self-introduction. My name is Brian, and I live in a town called Williston, which is an hour north of Adelaide in South Australia. I came here by myself as a single migrant, uh, so my situation is a little different from Karen. So I came here on my own roughly about eight years ago, and um, coincidentally, uh, the both of us came here roughly at the same time weeks apart. Mm. So I, I went to visit Karen first before moving to my home in Adelaide. And eventually now I, I found a husband and I am happily settled in Williston in a little town in the country that's uh, up north from Adelaide. So very peaceful here. All right. So um, today uh, what we aim to do is uh, because for our previous uh, episode, if you haven't watched it, uh, we talked about the realities of migrating. Uh, yeah, we talked about the realities of migrating and yeah. then we gave you we gave you the real um, picture. Um, it wasn't a rosy picture. And then um, after that, if you guys wanted to continue with your migration journey, of course, you're more than happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So today, uh, what we aim to do today is um, what to do after your visa has been approved which means you are still in Singapore, okay? Your, yeah. your migration journey, um, you are still in Singapore. Now you have your visa on your on your lap. You're like, oh shit, what do I do now? Because it's getting real. Yeah, it is. So as you can see from Ryan's intro, that he's the veteran uh, travel log, you know, video person because his intro are very, he's very specific and he knows exactly what to tell you. So I missed out a few things though. I'm married an Aussie. Okay. So during our time, uh, I'm called the Sarong Party Girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, still got the long hair, but don't have the tan because just coming out of winter. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> no, but I don't have the Angmo accent. You know, so I think that is the first thing that we will jump straight into is that we, when we're in Singapore, we speak really proper. Okay, like the English, you know, it's really nice, nicely done. I mean, ever since I'm, I mean, no, actually, who's, who am I kidding? I've always been very lean on. I love it because it's embracing a, a part of me that is me. And I've never shied away from it. It just got worse here, isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> that, that, is, that is so true, though. Now, before we go into this Alien Abing thing, yeah, um, we are going to talk about uh, several varied uh, topics today. Um, about what to do when you're still in Singapore. So um, I'm going to put very specific time codes next to the subject that we're talking about. And um, you can actually forward to that time code of, of your specific interests. Or alternatively, you can follow us um, throughout the entire conversation of this video mm. um, just to give you um, a watch holistic... Watch, watch. Yeah. It's very amusing. You, you, it will amaze you. Yeah, to give you a holistic approach um, yeah. as to how how do you handle this migration um, right till the day when you decide to depart from Singapore. Okay, so remember guys, right now you are still in Singapore and your visa has just been approved. Okay? Okay, let's All go. Right, let's talk about the first point, which is the emotional roller coaster. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we need to talk about this because uh, the both of us have been through it. I have moved, I have personally, I have moved um, countries to work many, many times. Uh, and every single time I do it, it doesn't get easier. Yeah. You think uh, for someone who is as well-traveled as I am, that this is a piece of cake. Yeah. But it's not. 
it's, it's not, not because yeah it's not because um especially migration when you're doing everything on your own mm. because i've been sent overseas to work before by 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 my, my company and you know everything is rolled up for you uh, your your apartment is taken care of your transport is taken care of. Yeah. You even have extra money, hardship allowance. So all that is taken care of. Uh, when I went to Indonesia to work, I even had my own driver. No? I know, so spoiled, right? Can I? Yeah, so spoiled. So now if, you, if you're coming to Australia on your own, it, it's really on Correct. your own. Correct, yeah. Okay, you have to I, depend on your own resources. My my experience with, you know, is very, very different from what I need to understand though. So um, I married an Aussie. So, and then some more, some more shotgun and that's why I come here. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. When my son was old enough to know, he's like, hmm, you're not married before you had me. So he's like, this whole big thing. Anyway. So, so he did the math. <laughs> he did. He did that. It was so bad. I felt so bad. Oh my God. Anyway. So my experience is very, very different from Ryan. Now. So if you're traveling on your own, with your family, just you guys. Uh, you got to listen to his story. It's very scary. For me, it's different. He's, he, he's a resident. He knows everything. So I just come. But the, the loneliness I get because I'm here by myself. I don't have friends. I will have long distance call my girlfriend and I miss her. I'll cry a lot some more. Or every week, he'll, he'll bring me to our local like Asian video shop, right? Those, during those times, some more videotape. <laughs> watch video tape every day because I don't understand the Australian accent. So I can't watch daytime TV. Oh, that was awful. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are several, there are several stages in your, in your emotional well-being when you're planning to migrate. Mm. When the, there was a recent study done by the NUS uh, media department. Um, and I just watched the video a few weeks back. A staggering 42% of Singaporeans, when asked whether will they migrate, the answer is yes, they want to do it. Wow, really? 42%, okay? So NUS Media Department did this. Uh, they went on Orchard Road to, to interview no. um, you know, regular Singaporeans walking there. Whether do you want to migrate? So a staggering 42%, 42% said yes. Yeah, but until come the crunch time, it's not that correct, easy. Correct, correct. So... Um, I, I have been through I've been through the entire process, okay, from, from the high of deciding yes, I want to do it, right down to the low, the actual horror of realizing what I've done. Yeah, that's okay? right. Okay, so you your you'll go through the whole spectrum of emotions. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you will go you'll start from from very exciting high because um you're planning, oh, this is an exciting life. I want to migrate, I want to do it. Uh, and you've chosen to come to Australia. Because why? You've been there for a holiday before. Yeah. So uh, nice, right? People so ah, friendly, right? Correct. People so friendly, you know, blue skies, koala yeah. on the tree and all that. The air so uh, nice, right? Uh, air so nice. You smell the air, you know, all you smell is eucalyptus. It's like, wow, such a relaxing lifestyle. So yeah. that, that is the imprint of Australia in our head for a lot of, uh, a lot of you guys back in Singapore. Okay. So you start from that high. And then you apply for it. You're still high at that point. Very, very happy. You apply. Oh, it's so exciting. You, you submit forms. And then you start telling your friends, oh, I applied to migrate to Australia. Mm, mm. So the first time when you utter those words, you're like, yeah. oh, you, 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 feel, you feel this uh, euphoria. Euphoria is a word, okay? You're high, you're high, you're high. You want to do it. Yes, yes, yes. And then after that, when the approval comes, when it gets real, <laughs> this is when a lot of a lot this is when a lot of people start to panic. They're like, oh shit. You know, it's getting real now. Hey, this one is the oh oh. Ah, it's a oh oh, what have I done? You know? So at this point, uh it is normally at this point where where a, a lot of people decide, uh oh, yeah, maybe don't want uh, scare. Yeah, yeah, pull up. Mm. Yeah. So you I'll give yourself a lot, you give yourself a lot of reasons, you know, yeah. you give yourself a lot of reasons why you do not want to do it. And they are valid reasons, huh? Yeah, okay. yeah, correct, correct. There, there are valid reasons, okay? Mm. So for, for Karen, you didn't really have a choice because you <laughs> shotgun, bun in the oven, you had to come here. Right? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. correct. And I, there's nothing holding me back in Singapore anyway. 
Correct, correct. So for me, I started, I started to doubt myself. No, did I make the right choice? I mean, I, I, I had a pretty comfortable job in Singapore. You had a good job, my God. Yeah, I had a good job, you know, working yeah. for startup. Yeah. <laughs> startup. Oh my God. Ah, oh, yeah. I had a very good job. Um, you know, the the pay, the pay was very comfortable. And then I started asking myself, why do I want to do it? So I had to keep reminding myself why I wanted to migrate in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is what you need to do is to keep reminding yourself what started this migration journey yeah, for you your in why. the first place. Your why is very important. Yeah, your why. Okay, so your why has to be with you um, throughout your entire journey. Even yeah. today, uh, you know, sometimes when I'm low, I still remind myself why. Eight years later, I'm still reminding myself why I did it. Mm. so this is something you got to do and then uh, you know it will it will progress until all the way until uh, your departure date yeah on the day when you go to Changi Airport uh, yeah we will you, you will probably be so drained Don't by then feel real though. yeah right yeah. yeah you'll be so drained by then uh, you have yeah. no mood for anything else yeah we will touch on that later when we talk about our farewell meets uh, with your friends correct Correct. It's yeah. it's true though, and and to be and to be honest, uh, Ryan has me to come too. So he's that's why his very first stop was to come and see me. Yeah, I had to. Uh, otherwise, it's if I went to Adelaide, home. if I went to Adelaide directly, I think I would have gone crazy. See, they'll see, they'll bow, see, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Go there. Ah, sleep my wrist. <laughs> that's why it's so important though to set up a network and know what you're doing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So. Now, now that now that your your visa has been approved, you need to you need to set into motion uh, your plan, okay? Because normally, depending on what visa you have, normally there is a there is a cutoff date for you yeah. to come in. Uh. There the is a cutoff date, date yeah. that after this, if you don't come, uh, your visa is gone. Correct. Okay, so depending depending on what your what your cutoff date is, um, normally uh, the cutoff date is a year. From the time when your visa has been has been given to you, mm, mm. okay. So one one of the points we're going to bring up is uh, to prep one year before your actual move. So during the whole year, uh, during the whole year, you need to start prepping. All right, as soon uh, as you get like, your visa, lah. Yeah, as no soon point, as you get your no visa. No point you prep before you get your visa, right? Like you go and wow, buy the hen house, everything, or wow, prepare for. The chickens to lay and no chickens still. Yeah, correct, correct. So a good, uh, a good comfortable um, planning period is a year from the time you get your visa and to the time of your departure, your one-way ticket, uh, your one-way ticket. Mm. So this was what I did. Okay, um, during that time, um, w- w- when I first got my visa, I, I started to mm-hmm. come to Adelaide two, three, four times. I made four trips. Of course, the final trip is the one-way ticket. Lah. So I made um, three networking trips to come here to meet. Um, for a start, I started meeting fellow Singaporeans. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. My my friend my friend who, who lives in Hawaii happens to know someone who lives in Adelaide. So I went around the world <laughs> for my for my connection to happen. So uh, yeah, so I, I met the my first Singaporean contact when, when I arrived. And then I came back again um, to, you know, to keep, to keep the relationship going. Yeah. And in the meantime, I started fanning out my resumes to, to, um, to prospective employers. And uh, I did this several times before my actual move. Mm. Okay. Now, one of the things uh, to take note of uh, if you're looking for a job is um, to borrow someone's Australian address here before you move. You need to have an Australian, Australianized resume, okay? Because your point of contact has to be Australia. Mm. Yeah. So I borrowed my friend's address there, and I started fanning out resumes now. You know, just to just to get a feel of who will hire you. Yeah. Because um, depending depending on where you are settled in Australia, mm. um, the job situation varies very very greatly. If you are in Sydney, Melbourne, you know, job. Yeah. Job is easy there because uh, everyone right. is always it, it, it's a it's a commerce driven um economy so right. you know right. jobs are always available but if you go outside of um Sydney Melbourne um to Perth Darwin Adelaide Hobart Tasmania right 
Uh, yeah, you know, jobs are really, really hard to find there. So you really have to depend on your network. Yeah. Um, you really depend on on who you know. It's not what uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, anything you want to add for this prep? Your, me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of our moves, the company pay for. So, but we still had to get the proper quotes, lah, like, you know, the quotation for the move and all that. That takes time also. To to pick and choose the right um the right movers, yeah. And it is how much you pay. Uh. Make no mistake. The more you pay, it is actually they are nicer and they cover a lot more things. Yeah. Yeah. So um. That also takes time, and then if you have animals you want to move, we don't we don't recommend it lah. But I understand that animals are pets are your family. I get that. That also you got to prep in advance. You know. Because some pets are not allowed in mm. Australia. Like in Singapore, you know, you can buy toucans, right? Those birds. Those pets. <laughs> can not allowed. What? Yeah, you can buy toucans in uh, the Serangoon Garden, that's like the pet store. Seriously? Stuff. You, mm. you rear them to eat, right? <laughs> no, they're the ones with the colourful pig. Here, you think uh -huh. about food. Eating what? So, those are not allowed. In Australia, only native birds are allowed. So you got to find out all these things. What is allowed and how long is the quarantine and how much. That takes time because it's very draining to go and run after these things. Yeah. Uh, you do have to start planning early these things. Yeah, so remember, um, you you have to give yourself a year to plan because what, what a lot of people tend to do is uh, they always leave everything to the last minute, huh? Yeah, because if you leave it to the last minute, you know, by by the last three months, the last two or three months before you move, uh, mm. you, you are emotionally drained already by then. All right. You have no more, you have no more energy, you have no more mental capacity. Yeah, your high is gone. There's no more high. Yeah, just your high plain, is gone. It's just plain determination only to get you across that line. Correct, correct. Your high is gone by then. You your your happy mood uh, from from deciding yes. Yeah. I want to migrate. Uh, yeah. To the last the last few months, the last few weeks of yeah. your life in Singapore yeah. will be Correct. so drained. Correct. You're scared, you know, you're starting to get scared because yeah, it's you're getting to real. Get scared because shit is getting real. <laughs> yeah, so you're starting to get scared. Yeah. Right. Mm. So which leads us to the next point now, uh, which is um during during this after you after you say, Oh yes, my visa has been approved, right? And then you start your farewell meet. Uh. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are going to want to meet you la. Yeah. All your all your farewell uh your, your farewell meets la. Yeah. Your farewell dinner, your farewell lunches, your farewell yeah. breakfast, and everything in between. Your farewell coffee meets. It is going to drain you out. Correct. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Because every single person you meet now, you're gonna have to repeat your story. You know, oh, I'm migrating to Australia. At first, it's fun. Mm. Tell them your journey, mm. and then after a while. Yeah. It becomes a bit of a chore. Yeah. Because you keep repeating yourself how stressed you, to, you are, how stressed you are. The and your friends, part, uh, yeah. It's the huh? explaining part because uh, some people think you are crazy. Yeah. There it's will like be people who try to why. discourage you. Mm. Yeah. And there will be people who will not understand what you're talking about. They say Australia, okay, wow, so short, you know, yeah, so Australia, easy, like, what? Some holiday. Yeah. Uh, Australia so nice, you know. <laughs> so there will be there will be people who don't understand. Yeah. Uh, what you're going through, and there yeah. will be people who try to discourage you. So this is where this is where your why. Correct. Yeah, your be determination. Very clear. Your why. Mm. Yeah, you have to be very clear that yes, you are still going because of whatever reasons that Correct. set you on this path. Correct. Yeah. Spend time with the people who means a lot to you, though, because it won't be so easy to come back. You think, mm. no, no, okay, well, I can fly back. Things get in the way. You need. You start a job. You cannot. You know. You cannot say, oh, I, I need to fly back and see my friend because I miss my friend. Cannot. So take the time to spend time with the people you really care about. Yeah. Mm. We spend a lot of time, remember? Even though we know we're going to see each other, we're going to be in the same country. But we do things that we used to do yeah. a lot because we know the two of us know that we... The next time I go back to Singapore, he won't be there. Yeah. And then when he goes back, I won't be there. Remember? We went so we for... We got the I funny think... business, huh? We do. <laughs> I think the both of us went for coffee almost every weekend prior to our move. Huh? Yes, a lot. Talking, about, talking about how sian and how stressed we are. The, by then, the fun is gone already. We, we are like, by, by then, we were, you know, we're stressing, we're panicking. 
Mm. Yeah, so we we lean, we basically lean on each other for support. Lah. So we met each correct, other for coffee correct. almost every weekend. Yes, before. we did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Because you, you have to, uh, you have to, because you, you no, no one is going to understand your predicament. Mm. Yeah, only only you or we, because we, we've gone through it. So correct. only the people who correct. have gone through it no will understand. No way to find us if you want to, yeah. someone to un- to hear you. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. You can always, uh, you know, give us a buzz. Uh, ever since oh, our last on, video, comment on this thing. Comment on this yeah. video. We'll find you. Correct, correct. Because ever since our last video, I've um received quite a number of um calls for assistance. What to do? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, don't feel shy about calling me. You know, I um to the best of my abilities, I I will yeah. um, offer yeah. support and uh, that's right. You know, Point if I if I can't find you the answer, I'll point you in the right in the right direction. Correct. That's the whole point of us doing this video anyway, because we know it's hard. Yeah. And finally, we're in a position to give you some advice. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, make sure you don't cram yourself with too many farewell uh, needs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So pace yourself. You know, pace yourself, because uh, you you need you need time to, for for this whole experience to sink in as well. Because. Correct. Right. Yeah, so it will drain you out. Uh, this this farewell meets with your friends in Singapore. So pace yourself. Okay. That much you can eat. There's only that much you can eat. <laughs> yeah, correct. There's only that much you can. Eat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, again, you know, talk about eat. We're we're seg- We're gonna segue into our next topic. What? What is the next topic? Is to eat as much as you can before you leave. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was that was like my experience like, with the bloody chicken rice shop here. Disgusting or not? Yeah. I tell you, it's not the same. Okay, it will come close, but it won't be the same. So you better eat the food you like. I'm telling you, or better still go and learn how to make it. Yeah. When you so find time, you find time to yeah. learn how to make. Use that opportunity with your mates. Uh, uh, if you're meeting for farewell and all that. To go and eat the things you want yeah. to eat before correct. you leave. What you like. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Because when, when you come here, that there's it's going to be a challenge uh, to yeah. find your favorite food. Correct. I lucky yeah. at my at least in Melbourne, uh, at the Asian shops here yeah, are pretty decent, you know. We can still get glory, uh paste and all that, prima. This Ryan, not so easy, okay? Yeah, that's why I I was just talking to to some SG Kongsi members um, this morning. We went for yam cha. So they were suggesting that I start selling my sambal. Really? Eh? Maybe I should move. Eh? Today I make a big batch of beef rendang. Eh, damn nice. Yeah. Okay? yeah. So uh-huh. I so that got me thinking. Uh, maybe I should start selling you know, my, my sambal. And um, yeah, start, a, really? start a Facebook page. And whoever wants to order, just message me from there. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like Joanne and then I roast pork, can I? Ah, like our friend Joanne come. If you haven't seen her, our friend Joanne come in yeah. Kuala Lumpur. She's a comedian. A comedian yeah. yeah. Because now comedian got no business, why? you know, everything locked down. So she sell roast pork, uh, sell siu yolk. Yeah. Hey, yeah, apparently them good, okay? Yeah, and very lucky. Like the way she sell. Wow. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, so, um, yeah, if you come here, if you move, if you happen to move to Adelaide, um, <laughs> you are a bit desperate for sambal, yeah, hook me up. Yeah, I also, I also, I'm in Melbourne. I also make sambal all. Because cannot get <laughs> so you have to make. Ah. Yeah, so I'll make my own sambal, then I sell to you. Lah. Okay, then you buy from me, support me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. so um, besides food, ah, so the next point is um, what you need to get before you move. What you need to buy for the Ooh, move. So much. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much, it's, eh? It's... Um, Understand that you are not moving to, to Timbuktu. La. You can still get most of the stuff here. Yeah, la, but some things cannot get, you know. Ah, and some things some cannot I get. Some so I tell my for friends, the, la, they don't understand. <laughs> so for people like, uh, you know, the the very auntie type. Uh, me, me, me. You need tiger balm, you need paper wrap and all that, Vicks and all that. Uh. So you need to buy all those things before you... You need to buy all those things to bring in. Uh. Correct? So, uh? Yeah, like, hey, got to buy rice cooker from Singapore. Huh? Well, here can I buy nice me? rice cooker. Huh? Here can I buy what? Well, I bought my no, rice cooker here. What? No, the Tifa ones, uh, if you want to make like clay pot rice, uh, uh. it won't cook. You want to make nasi lemak, it won't cook. Because it's okay. got a set time. 
not like the Asian ones are a smart time. Can you buy the Asian ones here? Yes. They are yeah. like $400 upwards. Huh? I paid for mine, $99. I bought from Best. So those things you have to buy in Singapore, you cannot. And all your Korean thing, face cream, all. Okay, please buy. Buy and bring, buy and bring. That's what I do. But please do not think that you can smuggle food stuff. Huh? Please, huh? don't think you can smuggle food stuff. Don't even think about smuggling it in your container huh? when you bring things in because if they open your container, you are done for. Don't even think of it. Basically, when you arrive, just declare. Yeah. If you want to bring in, uh, if you want to bring in food items, bakwa cannot. Okay. I know for a fact you. Yeah, but ba, ba. it's funny, you know. This this bakwa sometimes can, sometimes cannot. So recently never, they have said bakwa cannot. Never can. I yeah. never. Yeah. So there was a time, there was a period where coming into Australia, you can actually bring bakwa in as long as they were commercially sealed. Mm. Pack. So the you know Beijing Hyang at Changi Airport, uh, they know, you know oh you're going to Australia, uh, we will individually pack the bakwa. Yeah, for the you. single coins, right? Uh, single coin one and they seal it up for you. So even that now you cannot bring in. Yeah, cannot So bring the in. latest development with, with the Department of uh, Border Patrol and Immigration is um bakwa totally no. Correct. They will ask yeah. you, they will ask you, and they'll actually learn how to say bakwa, you know, in case you don't understand. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so funny. But biscuit, Australian immigration, can, yeah, they, they've come a long way, like they've come a long way. Correct, so correct. They they Just know they know that. what Bakwa is. So they even have signs uh, um at the airport, no. Bakwa yeah, yeah, yeah. is not allowed. Correct, correct. <laughs> Just yeah. don't just don't uh. some people think it's okay. I smuggle in my container with all my mm. things, you know, all the all the paste flour like, that don't do it, man. Yeah. Because it'll cost you extra money if they open your container, you're done for. Because I'm sure you guys have seen um, border security in Singapore, right? I don't know if they have it there, actually. I, I remember then watching Malu it one, okay. Singapore. People check your bag, open your bag, all oh, very Malu one, okay. I only watch border security uh, to watch the Asians get caught. I know. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, they all like them bad. Lah. And then they say, oh no, and they pretend to understand English. Oh, yeah. I don't understand English. It's so fun to watch people get caught. And then when Asians get caught, it's always food. Yes. It's always, always food, right? you know, always food. For some reason, it's, it's always food. Australia, you just don't. It's They yeah, have a primary culture. Here mm. is food. Yeah, so it's the... the, the, the it's um, disrespectful. Uh. It is, it is, it is. Mm. The customs um, arrangement here at the airport uh, is very, very different from Changi Airport. Uh. Yeah. yeah. Because Changi, they're so lax. Uh, they, they just keep waving you, waving you, waving you. But mm. here... You know, do not get caught with food items. Correct. So the please, dogs will come in and all yeah, that. Some more Asian flights are the dogs will come on. Because mm. they know they cannot trust us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next point. We are going to talk about decluttering container mm. and storage units in Singapore. Okay. So what I did uh, before I move, uh, I, I used this opportunity to declutter. I threw away a lot of um, a lot of crap that I didn't need. Uh, this is the perfect time to open your to open your wardrobe and look at what you have in there that you have not touched for years, and throw them away. Go and mm. donate it because you can only bring so much to Australia. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So what what I did is um, I took out all my clothes uh, and I stuffed whatever that I needed to bring. And I came with about five suitcases, 85 kgs worth of, um, of, of bags. Huh? Mm. My initial plan was to tumpang your trailer, remember? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but I managed to squeeze everything into five, five luggages. So I, I didn't need the trailer after all. So I packed my entire life <laughs> into five luggages, checked in. Mm. 85 kgs was my check-in luggage. Yeah, and um, because it's eighty five kgs, I, I flew business class lab. Mm -hmm. Then, um, then I would get all that uh, all that luggage allowance. And I had a friend who was kind enough to come with me on that journey. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. So both of us um, got enough in business class. So I used his baggage allowance as well, and that was how I managed to come in with eighty five kgs worth of luggage. Yeah. <sighs> if you ask me now, how did I do it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but somehow I did. No, you travel oh, like you always travel like. You always yeah, I've like always that. I have always traveled like. Mm. 
um, mm. my last trip to UK mm-hmm. for 10 days, I went there with only uh, hand carry. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. Yeah, but did I know. It. The last time he came to visit me, so one backpack, eh, seriously. You know? I, I yeah. trolley back. I, I go and see him two nights at trolley back. <laughs> yeah. So it was a very uh, good opportunity to declutter your life. So yes, I threw out I threw out so much crap, you know, accumulated throughout my, my, my whole life in Singapore. Stuff that I don't I don't know why I kept them for, you know, clothes la. Um, yeah, because you just leave la. it there, you don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, you just accumulate, 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 accumulate. So I actually still have a storage unit um back there, you know, in Singapore. Oh, is it? Yeah, I still have a storage. I have only have one box. Oh. One box inside the storage unit. Everything else in there belongs to my parents and my brother. Lah. Ah, yeah, yeah. But, okay, yeah. Right. So I only have one box of books, um, mm. photo frames, photo albums. Yeah. And that, yeah. Day, that day, my brother just texted me and said, hey, do you still want the stuff in there? And I'm you like, should have brought the box. Great, I remember that. You should have yeah. given it to me. So now I, I'm wondering whether should I still... Because these are like stuff I've never seen. I've actually no, forgotten about all that. No, but the photos, that. you need to look through them. La. Go and look through them. Yeah, I suppose. So eventually, eventually I will sort out that one box. But that's all yeah. I have left in Singapore, that one box. Eh? Mm. Yeah, so you, you guys need to need to sort your life out as well. Um, what right. are you going to okay. do, you know? I agree. Um, to, to declutter. I and agree. You you can talk to them about your your experience for the container because you did it. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really. So the decluttering thing, yes, I agree. Like, don't bring things that you really don't need. But like mm-hmm. I said, though, because I moved in and out a few times, uh, I know what you can get here. You buy a steamboat in Singapore. You know you want the Korean style one with the barbecue and then the you know the soup one. You cannot get here, so you got to buy from Singapore. So you got to be very very clear what you what you use. And then you can buy it from Singapore. Like other things, of course, like toaster, all that you buy from here. La. Yeah. But the Asian style things uh, that you want, that those big steamers, la, because because I do a bit of site catering also. So all that I buy from, what's the, I can't remember what's that kitchen shop called. I bought it from that kitchen shop. And then it all goes into a container. So, you know, one of our, one of our Eshi Kongsi, you know what did he buy the last time he went back to Singapore? He bought that, uh, you know, this this frame, uh, this frame where you put your quali on it to make zizha. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. Connects, he connects the, the gas tank to nice. this frame. So they ha- yeah. it has a ring of fire. So when you turn oh. on the fire, uh, it goes... Nice. Uh, that is the fire he he, he needs uh, to stir fry his chakwe tiao because you, you can't stir fry chakwe tiao on electric cool. stove. Uh. <laughs> Correct, correct. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, you know, stuff like this, very, very unique to, to Singapore uh, that you can't get here. Uh, this was what he did the last time we went back to Singapore. He came back yes. with that with that frame to put on the yeah. ground where he can put the squally on it uh, uh, yeah. with that ring of fire. Uh, that was yeah. what he specifically bought. So, I also bought stuff a nice like this, uh, you need to take mm. note. Uh, I, also buy, okay. I also bought a nice big walk because mm. the next size up, uh, you can buy here in the catering shop for Asian restaurant. It's mm. damn big, law. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to use it. You have to have a professional setup. So you can put your whole baby inside and fry. You can put your whole baby inside and fry. Yeah, that time. So, yeah, just look carefully, lah. Because those mm. things are it's not common here. Like if you yeah. would like to keep your water in a hot water flask, they don't have it here. You got to buy it in Singapore. Mm. You know those. You know you fill up the water and then the thermos flask, and right? then you. Oh, you press, press, press one now. Yeah, you press, 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 and the hot water come out. You cannot yeah, get actually it. Actually, true, uh, true, uh, because my, my, my Chinese friend bought it from China. Mm. Yeah, you can't, you can't find it here, the press, press one. So yeah, she, she bought it when she went back to China and then she came correct. back with it. And all the thermos, the thermos type one also cannot get here one, okay? The yeah. Takashimaya's B1, uh, all those things uh, you cannot get here. Uh, style, yeah, so um, decide, decide on, on what you want to get and then um they'll plan plan to have them ship them over la. but if Correct. two of you are moving you know you can plan somehow how are you going to spread out uh the luggage allowance between the two of you yeah correct yeah yeah don't think that you can carry it huh like those are uh, they buy mm. dv all carry on board okay don't bother i keep thinking <laughs> oh, yeah, I really should have bought another rice cooker. So now it's okay, like, I'll carry. No. Remember our time in SQ? I know. 
<laughs> they check in. <laughs> they check in the whole stove. <laughs> Ayo, I tell you, I give up on these people, seriously. Oh, they try to start a fire in the cabin to cook over Ayo. the urban stove. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. Think carefully like what you want. If you if you're not sure whether they have it or not, you just drop us a message here and I'll answer you. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Um don't forget at any point, uh, at any point in, in time, um, if you need any um queries, uh, okay, about what, what to do when you're still in Singapore, how how are you going to do this, do that, and correct. Just just drop us, just drop us a message and we're correct. more than happy to help. Yeah. 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 Okay, so are we done with the uh, decluttering and storage unit and all that? Yes, yes, we have. Okay. So, pets, oh, how yeah. did you go through your process of um, bringing your dogs here? Uh, it's very tedious, eh? And you, you can pay someone to do it, or you can do it yourself. I did it. Uh, I paid someone because it was just too hard. Because the the rules, they keep changing. So, you got you to... Gotta, some. During that time, uh, because the rules keep changing, uh, during that time, our dogs need to go into quarantine a month before they can come across, you know. And then even after they reach here, they still got to quarantine uh, another three months. So it's a lot, a lot of money. Uh. It's a lot of money. We have two dogs and then I thought, cannot leave them behind, right? Per dog costs at least 12 grand. Okay? Because plus quarantine, two sites, plus airfare. And then the two dogs come back are so traumatized, okay? They are like so traumatized that when they came home, my God. Because it is very scary la, for them. Did they ever recover from the trauma? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay now. But yeah. And the thing is, they say when they are in quarantine in that country, uh, when I was here, my dogs were in quarantine. I never went to see them. Because, my because you can't. You're not allowed walk. to, are you? No, no. I can visit. Uh -huh. And it's very fast. I'm all, uh, it's like two hours drive away because it's in mm. a country. And um, oh, there are only there are only so many quarantine stations for pets correct, in Australia. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you you're migrating to Adelaide. Uh, your dog will get quarantined in Adelaide. No, the quarantine correct. stations are only in Sydney and Melbourne, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, think so, so the quarantine stations are not anywhere. So once your dogs get released, uh, you still have to prepare for the transport yes. from the quarantine center to wherever you are. Correct. Like let's say Correct. if I if I'm in, in Adelaide right now, there's no quarantine station at Adelaide Airport. Correct. I yeah. have to depend on the airport in Melbourne. Mm. And after that I still have to arrange for transport. Yeah, that's to right. Bring my pets to me in Adelaide. Correct. Uh, so that's something you need to consider as well. Correct. And then some people they go and see their pets and all that. And then my vet tell me, don't uh, because they don't understand that you're visiting them. You yeah. go and see them, they're very happy, they think you're gonna take them home, you know. So she mm. said then you keep creating this loop of stress uh, for your dog. So we mm. never did. And some of two hours away, we allow Xiao Bo. So I never, la, I never, I never bother. To so painful, see. right? You know your dog is there, but then you can't visit. Yeah. And then you go, you want to go and see them, but you know it's not good for them. So no point, la. don't do it. La. I mean, if you can, don't bring. La. Sorry, la. sorry to say. It's a lot mm. of money. Eh? It's a lot of money and, and the emotional toll it's is very, very, very stress, heavy. Eh? Yeah, it's, it's very, very stressful. stressful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. La. That's all la, for the pet thing. Yeah. So we, we are moving on to the next um the next point that we want to make. Uh. It's your your alien Abeng wannabe. We forgot yeah. to talk about that in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you see, yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, for me growing up, um, my my family was very strict in the way we spoke. So we we were basically a Channel 5 family. La. So we only spoke English at home, maybe a bit of Malay because of my, my neighbors and my, my relatives. But otherwise, we, we spoke almost no dialect. La. It's purely English at home. And we were we were told um, to speak properly. Otherwise, we cannot wait. <laughs> Okay, so we, we grew up we grew up thinking that oh you know uh, I'm more pie lah. Basically, I, I went to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I went to a Christian school. Um, my, my classmates were I'm more pie as well. So you grow up, you, you know you, you develop with, with this I'm more pie mentality, this, this channel five mentality. So this is something you need to take note now. Huh? When you come here, you're gonna miss speaking like an abeng, no. Mm. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> For your case, but, uh, mine is like very different. Uh, my upbringing uh. is very different from him. 
Yeah. I channel eight one eight. I always channel eight. Um, I know. So it's like for me, but still, there's this is how we are, right? At a certain age, we will resist our upbringing. So mm. there was a period where I thought, no, I can't. I'm like, oh, please, cannot. And then after that, I realized, you know what? That it's so me. So I cannot, and I refuse to. I refuse to reject it anymore. So I embraced it. And Ryan is right. You miss it. Yeah. You will mm. miss it so much. You suddenly, you suddenly miss um all, all, all your all your slangs and lingos. Yeah. That that's you your identity, with. you know. Suddenly yeah, that's your you identity. Hold on to that's it. your identity. Correct, correct. Because when you when you come here, um, you don't really you don't really uh fit into mm. the Australian society yet. Because growing up Aussie, that that is that's a whole that's a whole different chapter for discussion. Mm. Okay, we. We as migrants, we come here. We are influenced by the Australian way of life, but at the yeah. same time, we also hold the influences that brought us up. It was ingrained in us, yeah. Uh, so we we are this high. We as migrants, we become this hybrid um, culture. Mm. We're not here, not there. No, we're not here, mm. not there. Mm. And um, this will also come into play when you go back to Singapore to to visit your relatives. Mm. You will sound a bit funny to them. Correct. Right, you don't yeah. think so. You don't think so. I always thought my accent is very neutral. I always thought that. Yeah, but, but apparently not. Correct, correct. So when you're here, you start to search for your roots. Uh. Yes. For me, I I've never celebrated. I've never saw the celebratory side to National Day. Mm. You know, um, 9th of August. Everyone's so patriotic. You know, sing, stand up for Singapore and all that. I have yeah. never seen the celebratory side to it because I started my career in the Air Force. And every time National Day comes about, I'm working. Uh, mm, what's there mm. to celebrate, right? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. personally, I've never, I've never seen a celebratory side to it because I was always working, mm. right? So that, so even when I came out to the corporate world to work, uh, um, National Day to me is just another day. Uh, long weekend, uh, I'll go overseas. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. run, I uh, run away to Bangkok, uh, run away to Hong Kong, I uh, run away yeah, to yeah, Bali, yeah. Uh, you know. So yeah. typical, right? Typical Singaporeans to run away um, during National Day. But now that I'm in Australia. Suddenly, you need an identity to hold on to. Okay, so I started volunteering for for um, the Singapore Business and Social Association here in Adelaide. And during the the last few um, National Day events, I became the MC. Mm. <laughs> you know, so you start looking for reasons to hold on to to your identity. You, you start. Do. Um, you really do. You start trying to identify what being a Singaporean is all about. Correct. And it's ironic that we have to move 8,000 kilometers away for us to feel like that. It's yeah. strange, isn't it? That the way our, our mind works. Yeah. yeah. It does. It really does. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's so, um, So for those of you who have um, hybrid accents, don't feel ashamed about it. Yeah. Because when I go back to Singapore, the, the people in Singapore think I, 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 I sound weird. I've even been I've even been approached by um, students doing surveys, you know, on, on Orchard Road. <laughs> this this is so this is so funny. This is my experience. Um, in to, this is what twenty twenty. So in two thousand eighteen, yeah, two yeah, years ago, I, I went back. I went back to Singapore. I was walking along Orchard Road, right? Um, so this bunch of students, they were they were doing a survey to see how foreigners felt about Singapore. And they ran to me. They came to me with a mic and said, excuse me, sir, um, do you mind doing an interview with us? I'm like, sure, okay. Uh, I don't mind. So where are you from? <laughs> so they looked at me. They think I'm a foreigner, you know, red cheeks and all. Uh, my, my face gave it away because my cheeks are so red. Every time I go back to Singapore, I cannot stand the humidity. So my face becomes, my cheeks become rosy. So they, they saw my rosy cheeks. So they thought I'm from elsewhere. And then mm. I struggled for an answer. I didn't know what to say. I'm not from Singapore because I don't live there anymore. Mm. But at the same time, um, at that time, I was still thinking whether, yeah, I've lived in Australia, but am I really rooted here? Yes, I remember that conversation. Yeah. So yeah. that was that was a real kerfuffle for me to answer. So eventually I muttered, I, I come from Australia. Mm. And they're like, oh, how do you think about Singapore? But I was like, you know, I, I spent 
more than 30 years growing up in Singapore. And to for me to need to answer that question, it felt strange. Yeah. Felt very, very strange. So you, eventually, you are going to have that struggle as well as to how do you want to identify yourself? Yeah. yeah. That's a hard one, I'm telling you, because I'm now Australian citizen. Mm. It's still, it still doesn't feel real. I'm telling you, I don't know where it's home. I still don't. Yeah. Mm. So as a hybrid, as, as, as migrants, you're going to be this hybrid. You're going to be creating your own hybrid culture, right? Because um, to be honest, at work, this is how I sound like at work. <laughs> the Australian comes out. Yeah. And, yeah. you know. If you um, don't, no. they don't understand you though. If yeah. you don't, they don't understand you. So I, I sound like this at work. Mm. Um, I, I say things like, no, I don't know. Number 13, number 15. <laughs> this is how I sound like at I work. Don't, Otherwise, don't they're not going like to understand me. I don't sound yeah. like that at all. But worst case scenario, I have to go there. I'll go there very briefly because they don't understand you. Yeah. If you have to turn on your Aussie, yeah. you've got to turn it on. Correct. But right? I cannot turn but, on as good as this one. Uh. This fella turned on very well, okay? I'm not. And because, like I said, uh, I, I embrace who I am because you, want to, you, you know that you, know, you come here, you need to stand up because you are who you are. Yeah. So I embrace my... Asian accent, whatever, you know, whatever. So eventually um, you will find uh, your middle ground where you want to be, right? So I, I have, I think I've, I've settled very nicely in, in my middle ground. Karen, I, I'm sure you have as well. You know, yeah. you, embrace, you embrace being an alien. Yes, I love it. And you know, here, you know, they don't say, they don't know. Yeah. They don't. So when then, they are like, "What is that?" <laughs> TSK. That's what yeah, it is. That's annoyance. <laughs> so my boys know when I them they know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, this this will also lead on to to our self reflection uh, as as to 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 you personally who's watching this right now and you are in Singapore visa approved. And you're probably panicking already at this point, you know, um, your, your move is coming up. So again, I know I've asked this in the last video, but mm. I'll ask you again here, why did you want to move? Yeah. Why did you start this? Um, why did you start this journey in the first place? Mm. Yeah. What pushed, what pushed you to, to say, yes, I'm going to go to that migration agent's office and get this bloody thing started. Yeah. Okay, what is driving you? Mm. Yeah. Correct. Because Correct. This drive is what's going to make you survive mm. here. Yeah. Yeah. When you get low, mm. you just think of what made you do it in the first place. Mm. Correct. Yeah. We're not trying to convince you, eh? That once mm. you know your why, you have to do it. We no. just what we just want you to be sure, that's all. It's yeah. still not too late, you know? You're still mm. in Singapore. You haven't quit your job yet. You haven't done anything right. yet. Yeah, because Just at be this clear. time, yeah, there is no shame. There is no shame no. in turning back. Correct. Even yeah. if you come, you you don't like it, you go back. There's nothing wrong. At least you try. It's not for you, right? You don't try mm. how you know. Correct. You know, mm. there, there's this saying of um, how ma bu chi hui tou chao. Tou chao, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, come on lah. At least if you try it, it didn't work out. At least you try it. Correct. Rather than rather than those people, rather than those people who just sit there and you you crazy uh, you you this right. uh, this uh, that uh, this uh, that uh, I could have told you it wouldn't work out. Uh, but hey, at least you try it. Correct. Mm. At least you know. Yeah. You know for a fact. Correct. Don't knock it until you try. It. And you've tried it. It doesn't work. Fine. You know. It's Aussie for you, by the way. Don't knock it until you try it. <laughs> oh, is it Aussie? <laughs> Aussie slang, yeah. You can say, oh no, oh, I don't no. like it. And they say, don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that saying. Do not yeah. knock it until you try it. You know? Correct, correct. All right. So, um, yeah. So do a lot of self-reflection because uh, this journey will build you. It will build you. Yeah. All right. So. Um, You'll be worth it. 
Okay. You'll be worth it if this is what you want. You just got to yeah. be clear this is what you want. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It will be worth it if this is what you want and you're successful at the end of the road. It will be worth it. The struggle is worth it. Correct. Because look at where we are. You Correct. Know? Yeah. You think it was easy for us? No, because all what a lot of people see is our happy times on Facebook. Oh, we have yeah. arrived. You know, oh, we're sharing pictures of uh, a wonderful scenery in the background. Oh, we're, we're having this beautiful um, brunch in the middle of nowhere in some country town. You know, it's yeah. so relaxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All people see are the happy stuff on social media, but they do not see the struggles we go through. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah. So um, remember to self-reflect. This will build you. <laughs> I, I can't say that enough. I this know. You make it sound so scary. It's okay. It's okay. You'll be okay. Yeah. You've got Singaporeans okay. here. We're here to support you. So don't be afraid. Mm. You'll be okay, you know? Yeah. All right. So the final point that we're going to talk about is your one way ticket. Now it's getting real, really. You've come to the decision point where you've decided to go on to singaporeair.com. <laughs> <laughs> To book your one-way ticket here. This is what I did. I um, Because I had so much luggage, I, 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 went to, I, I went to book a business class ticket. And business class tickets out of Singapore is incredibly expensive oh, on yes. Singapore Airlines or, or mm. even Qantas. Mm. So the trick I did was um, I, flew, I flew Malaysia Airlines uh, via KL. Yeah. So on that day, on that day at the airport... Um, Wow, my face was so pale. My face was so pale to the point where I, I had no more emotions inside, all drained really at that point. Yeah. In, in January when I went to the airport to, to fly. So by that time, um, I told my friends, don't come and see me off. Or if you want to come, don't cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. my parents were there, was there, like, you know, my parents was there and uh, my mom, um, <laughs> I remembered... She, she just said, uh, it was as good as a, okay, thanks, bye. And then she just turned around and walked away. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure, she, I'm sure she broke down and cried as well. Yeah, I'm sure, man. Yeah, but my instructions were really, really clear to all those who came to the airport to see me, do not cry because Don't all I wanted to do, me. all I wanted to do at the airport that day was to say, I don't want to go anymore. I wanted to turn around and, and just yeah. say, no, I'm not going to do this. This I is know. how much in a panic I was. I know. I remember. Yeah. I remember and I kept telling you, I said, it's okay. I'm yeah. here. Yeah. You're coming to me. Yeah. So coming as a single person, that was... Very scary. That was, what was, that was what I was going through my head. I was just yeah. emotionally drained. Because normally for me, when I travel, I'm very, I'm very excited. You know, go to the airport. Um, yeah. I, I'm a very airport airline lounge person. Yes, eh. Yeah, Xiao but, this fella. but even even on that day when I, I had just no mood to enjoy the lounge at all, I was just like a zombie, you know, going from check-in to immigration into the airline lounge and then into the plane, you know, they were serving me my meals, but I was, I was blank. <laughs> I was in a panic. Yeah. And you know what the ironic thing is? When I got on the flight from, from Kuala Lumpur to Melbourne to see you, yeah, just as they whipped out the white linens to serve me dinner, yeah. the first course came on my tray, yeah. on my tray table. We were flying over Singapore. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Yeah, I looked up. I looked out of the window and I saw Singapore um, all lit up at night, you know, drifting further and further. It's a drama, drama, very drama. Yeah, very drama, very drama. And I was staring, you know, I was staring at, at Singapore the little island there all lit up, you know, all orange and it was like fire. And somehow it was partly cloudy. So the clouds actually illuminated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the brightness of the island, right? So this was how it felt like, you know, I was looking at the island drifting and drifting and drifting and drifting away yeah, to the point where I didn't even touch my first course, you know. Ay Yeah. And Wait, you know me, uh, I, eat, I eat a lot, right? Yeah. Every time the food comes, I'm very excited. But on that day, I just had no more to eat at all. I just watched the island drift further and further and further away until it was this little speck that just disappeared into the horizon. And I felt like crying. Mm. I felt like crying. It was supposed to be an exciting journey for me. I'm beginning a new life in Australia and I felt like crying. Mm. And of course, when you fill up the immigration form 
this is the first time you take for the first time migrant entering right migrant entering yeah yeah so that will be a very poignant moment for you as well <laughs> um yeah okay so uh I know it's very drama, la, but... Very drama one, la. maybe you don't feel anything also. Uh, yeah. yeah, but some maybe some people will go through the same drama like I did. Yeah, maybe, maybe. That's why but you, can... you uh, a bit crazy one, you, you got no drama on what? You just, ah, yeah, whatever, la, just move, la, bloody hell. Yeah, la, go. La, just but go. I'm sure it was stressful for you as well, what, this one-way ticket. With the kids and husband in tow. Are you please, ah, my husband in Australian, I know it was a matter of time. Yeah. But the stress right. came later on uh, when I got my citizenship. So there's a different episode altogether. Mm. That was a, a bit further down. Uh, the, the, the decision to be a citizen is very drama. One, very drama. Yeah, so that is that is a conversation that we need to have uh, eventually as well, whether to yeah. do it or not. Mm. But then let, let's take baby steps. Yeah. Okay, baby steps. So now you are still in Singapore and this will be your journey to get here. Yeah. To your one way ticket departing from Changi Airport. Yeah. Okay, so let's take it uh baby steps a little bit at a time. All right. So this video is dedicated to all of you yes. who are still in Singapore. Yes. Who have um perhaps by now you've gotten your visa and uh you you're like don't know what to do, panicking, shit yeah. is real. Yeah. And I start to lao in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this video is dedicated to you. Um, All right. Just know that at the end of the day, everything will work out. It will work out. If this is what you want, then mm. failure is not an option. Yeah, correct. Then you yeah. do whatever it takes. Exactly. Failure is work. not an option. You need to tell yourself that uh, so mm. that you will push yourself to make it work. Correct. So you will make you it will, work. Yeah, you must make it work. Do everything. Um, I used to work for Singapore Airlines and we have this... Uh, we have this phrase that we use uh, very often um, when we're doing flight ops. I still use it to this day. It's called DAPO, remember DAPO? Do all possible. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never say no until you've exhausted all your options. Correct, correct. Okay. And so truly, this DAPO, we don't, we don't. Yeah. We don't. Correct. Do not exhaust, do not say no until you've exhausted all your options. Mm. And this, uh, this mantra, this slogan of DAP or DAPO is, is something I hold very close to my heart and I still use it today. And this is how I've managed to survive for so long in mm. Australia. Mm. How much I struggled for the first few years trying to find my footing. Mm. Yeah, depending on where you are, um, mm. some people will struggle more than others. All right. Some of you lucky ones will come here and find a job immediately. Mm. But do know that uh, it doesn't happen for the majority of us. And it's not you. It's not you. It's not It's you. just the way things are. Correct. Yeah. So we will talk about um, settling down uh, once you arrived for the next video. Correct? What to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. What to expect. We'll yeah. What to expect after you've landed, you know, after you've landed, you're blur from the overnight flight. You have piles of luggage on the trolley yeah. coming out of the airport. And like, oh shit! Now I'm here. What next? Yeah. Uh, so we will talk you through um, what to do after you've arrived. How to get settled? Yeah. So in the meantime, go and eat my favorite meal for me. My favorite meal is bak chor mee. Okay, mee pok ta. Have two <laughs> bowls for me, please. Yes. Yeah. Extra yes. vinegar and extra chili, okay? Yes, yes. In the, do that for us, please. Because, yeah, we can't get it here. Yeah. All right. So, um, don't worry. Everything will be all right. And do uh, reach out to us if you have any, uh, any questions. Any, any questions queries. at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, in the meantime, if you like, uh, if you like our videos, uh, you know, just give us a like um, to give us some encouragement to make more of these videos yes. to help you guys. Okay, we want more. We want more. We, <laughs> we want, want more. more. <laughs> okay, do you have anything else to add, Karen? No, I'm good. Mm. All right. So, uh, good luck. And I hope to see you guys in, in Australia, wherever you might be. 
Yeah. And um, remember to reach out to Stay us. Stay in touch. Any help. Stay in touch. All right? Yeah. Mm. See ya. Bye.